few years ago down at Pamian, I guess you know Klaus Martin. Uh -huh. We were down and he really liked the Kogar, but they had modified the tooth. And he said with the modified tooth, he was real happy with it. I was wondering if you know. Yeah, that, that they, they now tooth. sell with a 45 degree tooth. Um, they didn't at first, and you got them to start making them with a 45 degree tooth. Uh, yeah, they work better. Uh, I have never used a Kovar, so I can't really say much about it. They, for a long time, they didn't have they didn't have any way of transferring tractor weight onto the on the gang, so you couldn't get that gang level. And I think that's not good. I believe now, last summer, I believe it was last summer, and maybe this coming summer, they're going to they're going to put um, they're going to put a pressure plate on so that you can transfer weight at the rear if you need to get the back time to the ground. Um, but that, for, for years, that was just got Kovar right on the list, having that double chain suspension. I just couldn't see it. As, as Klaus put it, he said, you know, I can send anybody out with a Kovar and they won't kill the crop. And that's an advantage to the um, On the other hand, it doesn't necessarily kill the weeds directly. So that's my take on the different kinds that are available at the moment. There are some others that aren't sold in the part of the country. Um, adjustments, there's three ways of a, a controlling the aggressiveness on a tying meter, the tying angle. Like I said, if it's steeper, it's going to dig in more. Um, in my experience, it's only the outer, the, the, the three lightest. Um, you know, they'll put five or seven or more even different settings on these things. I don't know what you use those really aggressive settings for. Um, maybe deep action faster. Uh, the time angle is one way to control it. The gauge wheels, um, pull the gauge wheels up and the machine goes deeper in the soil. Um, that's often, you know, often I'll just look at it and go, well, we're going to go with the lightest aggressiveness because this crop is little, or we can't take it anymore. And then you fill one of these other two things. So you get the gauge wheels, so the depth penetration's right. And then the tractor speed, often um, we'll be doing this and I'll say, you know, I think it'd be right if you slow down. And so it dropped back, you know, a couple hundred RPM and perfect. Um, so tractor speed is real critical. Uh, you go too fast, you're going to throw a lot of soil around and cover up with a young crop. Um, you go too slow, and you're not throwing the weeds effectively enough. Okay, now, you guys are going to be using these on relatively small acreage. When I got, you know, advising field crop producers and they're out there probably using the machine on, you know, 25 acres here and 50 acres there, um, they can adjust, get off, you know, try it, see how it looks, go another 100 feet, get off, see how it looks, go another 100 feet. Well, you may be out of your field by that point. So um, what I would recommend, and this is something I added after the handout was made up, is that you take notes. And this is what I do as a researcher, because I'm in the same situation you are. I have these little plots, and we got to figure out what we're doing. So I would refer back to previous years and what worked under the particular conditions I had at that time. So, you know, your date, the crop, you probably want to say the crop size as well, soil moisture conditions, and really, you know, is it... Is it really almost too wet, or is it just right, or maybe it's dry, or really dry? Um, what the time angle you use, um, gauge wheel setting, um, and then your gear and RPM, what speed you were going through the field, and then how well did it work? Did I tear things up? Did I do a good job? Did the weeds left when I was done? And that way, you, you know, over time, for any particular crop, you'll build up a record of, of how things went, and then you'll have a pretty good idea of how to set that machine up when you go into the field. Whether the next um, so this is how I approach the don't have much room to do this yet, and I think it might have worked pretty well for you guys as well. Um, so this just shows blind cultivation. We were going over the field before the crops even out of the ground, killing those little weeds in the in the white thread stage. Um, crops not up, the weeds aren't up, but there are weeds in the ground. Okay, so we the time weed. Um, different for different crops. With sweet corn, 
You can do it pre-emergence. That's really good. Go to getting those things in the white thread stage, or maybe they're just barely breaking the, the leaves are just barely breaking the soil surface. Um, even when the crop is just starting to poke out, you can still do it. That's fine. Um, you know, we just have the leaf hasn't started to unfold at all. Um, and then you can keep doing it up till you know the crop age is tall. Uh, you may tear up a, a, a leaf or two, but that's not going to slow the growth of the plant. When the crop is very small, you know, one to two leaves, um, you got to be, you got to go slow because um, you can easily bury. You know, the faster you go, the more soil is being moved off those tines, um, and uh, you throw enough soil over it, you can bury the, bury the, the crop and tree corners like that. Um, Snap beans, uh, you do a pre-emergence, again, that works real well. Uh, and then once the seedling's up, you can do it till about the second year you know, um, The soy, soybeans are tough, but you know that it dries a little bit. But um, I wouldn't recommend that for snap beans. Um, you want to avoid the crook stage. When the thing is just below the surface with a crook, or just above the surface with a crook, um, it's fatal to, for the crop to take that. You can just imagine what's happening those times. You're just hooking into that crop and breaking, breaking the bean right off. It just destroy your skin. Um, okay, peas, uh, basically pre-emergence until they start to tangle in the row. Um, time we eat peas all the time. Um, uh, potatoes, yes, potatoes. Very good. Um, you can do them any time from the day after you plant. Well, probably wouldn't want to do it that soon. But as soon as you've got weeds in the white thread, stay all the way over. The plant's about six inches. The vine's about six inches long. Um, and I'll say more about potatoes in a minute. Uh, coal crops, um, basically once the transplant is, is well rooted, so you don't flick it out. And again, uh, the Williams or the Laley is going to be more likely to pull your transplants out than a, than a, uh, a straight time or a 45 degree time. Once they're well rooted, you can take the time meter through and, and clean out the meat. Um, and then carrots, uh, the next one, I know people do it. I've never grown carrots on a commercial scale, um, so I've never had an opportunity to try time meeting them. I know it's done, I can't tell you how to do it. For some crops, it pays to increase the density of your planting. Um, pretty with beans and peas, I would say you want to up the, the density, and then you can go a little more aggressively with the time leading. And uh, we do this with the soybeans. Um, in our experiments, we plant a little heavier than most growers, and then we can, we can cultivate more with the time leader more aggressively. And yeah, you knock out one or two, but they compensate. Um, in the row because they're dense enough in the row that they, they will come. Um, potatoes. This is a trick I learned from Andy Leeds, who's a, who's a seed potato producer. Um, I don't know, some of you may be buying this seed. Um, but he, uh, uh, what he does is after he plants, uh, he hills up a little bit right over the row so that the potatoes, the seed, is, the seed is actually too deep at that point. Um, and then what that does is it allows him to come through with a time meter very aggressively and, and just rip the weeds out. And he can do that several times um, with very aggressive uh, time settings. And um, it moves the soil, not only rips up the weeds, but actually moves the soil out of the crop row. And by the time the potatoes start coming up, uh, the field is flat. He no longer has those hills, and then he can hill up and say it later, very many that come, come up later. But um, that's, that's a great technique. We've adopted it in the cropping systems project, and um, I can tell you it's, it's a nice way to do it. You need a fairly stiff time to do that. I'm not sure you could do it with a lady or a Williams. Um, it might be able to do it. I haven't tried it. Clods are a big problem for, you know, if you've got a cloddy soil surface, and this comes back to the whole thing with, um, with soil till. If you've got a cloddy soil surface, it's really a problem for time weeding because what will happen is you get these little windows between the clods, and the, you'll get weed seedlings coming up in, the, in between the clods. 
I've seen this in the field. You know, you look down and clean the crawlers. I, I get down with the hands and knees and crawl around a lot, looking at little tiny weed seedlings, and they'll be coming up in those, in those spaces between the claws. <coughs> well, what happens when you take the time weaver through? You just roll these suckers around, these claws just roll around. And maybe you get lucky and a claw ends up on the seedling, but for every one that ends up, you cleared another space where the seedling is even freer than it was before, and you end up with a needy field. You can't go deep and any deeper and rip it out of the roots, because if you did, you'd kill yourself. Um, so again, this all tells us Okay, I'm going to quickly run through a few tools that we don't have here. Um, this is a rolling cultivator. Um, large scale vegetable production. I don't know who do I don't I don't deal with the big non with the big commercial onion growers and whatnot. Do they use these things or it's all over the size? The uh, at one time this was the tool that all large scale vegetable producers had. You know, I mean the rolling cultivator is a standard large scale vegetable production machine. And it's very useful. I mean, it's a very flexible machine. Um, the, uh, you've got these rolling gangs. I'm a broader rolling gang, so you can see it up in the business and then the floor slate and take a look at it. Um, the, uh, what's nice about them is that you can, you can swivel this thing so that it either points into, so that it either throwing soil into the row or pulling soil away from the row. What that means is you can get pretty close to the row with that um, and, not, and not hurt the, the, the crop because uh, you're, not, um, you're not throwing soil in the way you would with a sweeper tiller. Um, you can also tip this thing. It will rotate around on the tube so that you can cultivate the side of raised beds. Somebody was asking me about side of raised beds here with Olga. Um, this is this is the tool of choice for cultivating the size of raised beds. You can actually throw soil back up onto the bed. Anything else you're using is going to pull soil off the bed. Um, there is a little bit of an unequal trap on the If you think about it, you know, all the long tubes and these that are in the rear are all on one side, and the short tubes with the tooling up front. And you've got to compensate for that by getting the track box. And these are always clear now. I've never seen it going out of configuration for these. Uh, there may be a way of doing it. You might be able to set up another. Uh, I think it's a good idea to put a, put a uh, sweep on the back because these, you may not be able to get that area right in between. Uh, those, those rolling gangs, and that will kind of that'll make a meaty strip. And when we were using this, when we were doing a lot of work with this machine, uh, we were having this meaty strip in the middle of these. And said, well, what do we do about that? And got these Williston cells, these things that you can mount a sweep on, the, on those two blades. Um, there's some other brands, Williston invented the thing, but uh, other people, the paths have all expired long ago.